Hey y'all, in this video we're going to continue looking at angles. This time we're going to define some special types of angles and look at some special pairs of angles. So let's start off with classifying some angles by their measure and this will group angles into different types of angles. Now the first one you should be familiar with, it is the right angle. It is an angle that measures exactly 90 degrees and there are multiple ways of marking a right angle in a figure. You can just go ahead and uh, give the measure of the angle. So angle R is a right angle. You can either write it actually on the figure or you can use measure of angle R and say that it's equal to 90 degrees in like a sentence description of a scenario. Or you can draw in this classic little corner into the angle. This is another way to indicate an angle is a right angle and actually this one's the most common one. It's uh, going to be the one you see most often in a labeled figure. Now once you have right angles you can look at those angles whose measures are less than 90 degrees and that would be the acute angle. So specifically an angle with a measure between 0 and 90 degrees is considered an acute angle. And these can be shown similarly. You can just put the angle measure on the actual figure itself, or you can say um, that they're just acute, or you can use the notation of measurement, right? And say the measure of angle A equals 55 degrees. And because that's between zero and 90, then the person reading the statement knows that measure, that that angle A is an acute angle. And then of course, we have the angle, that uh, group that contrasts the acute angle. We have the obtuse angles, and these are angles with a measure between 90 and 180 degrees. So angle B here is obtuse because its measurement is included as 120 degrees. And like before, if I wanted to put it in like a sentence statement, I can use measure of angle B say equals 120 degrees, and then anyone who reads that knows that by definition, angle B is obtuse. Now there are more than just right, acute, and obtuse angles. There are two more that we're gonna talk about right now. One of them is called a straight angle, and this is an angle that measures exactly 180 degrees. Of course, the picture of it is just a line with three points on that line, so three collinear points. Uh, I chose M, L, and T, and so therefore I can say that angle M, L, T is a straight angle. And of course I can say the measure of angle M, L, T is 180 degrees, which by definition means it's a straight angle. And then we get to one that's definitely, most likely, new, um, and it's called a reflex angle. And this is an angle with a measure between 180 and 360 degrees. Now, these angles come from like the leftovers of an angle. Remember in angles one, we said that we measured angle by the shortest distance between the two rays that make up the angle. Well, the reflex angle is the rest of it. So it's what goes on the outside. So angle bar has a reflex angle that measures 300 degrees. So we don't talk about BAR being this big angle out here, we talk about this small angle BAR having a reflex angle or leftovers of 300 degrees. So now we're going to talk about some significant, important, relevant pairs of angles that you're going to encounter quite often. And the first one we're going to start with is the linear pair. Now a linear pair of angles are two angles, just two, not like three or four, a pair means two two angles that share a vertex and a common side where the non-common sides form a straight angle or a line. So it's called a linear pair. So you start off basically with a line or a straight angle and you pick a point on that line and you have a ray come off of it and it forms two angles. So these two angles share a common side which is that ray and they form a straight line with their non-common sides and they share a vertex. So therefore, by definition, angle one and angle two form a linear pair. 
Now you might be familiar with this pair of angles, the complementary angles. These are two angles whose measures sum to 90 degrees and you can represent them or see them visually two different ways. One way is to create a right angle and add an additional ray in that right angle that breaks it up into two separate angles. And the statement I have here says if measure of ABD is 90 degrees, so ABD is a right angle, then angle ABC and angle CBD are complementary. So ABC and CBD, the two angles that make up that right angle, therefore they are complementary. Now they don't have to be attached like this. Complementary just means they add up to 90 degrees. So they can absolutely be separated from each other and not share anything at all. And so these two angles, E and angle F, are complementary. When most people learn about complementary angles in middle school, they also learn about supplementary angles. And these are two angles, two, not like three or four, two angles, whose measure sum to 180. And once again, like the complementary, they can be drawn as connected or they could be separated. The only thing I know is that they're two angles whose measure uh, sum up to 180 degrees. We know nothing about whether or not they share vertices or sides or anything like that. So in this picture I have my linear pair and it says if angle 1 and angle 2 form a linear pair and angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. And then we have angles T and S. One is 60 degrees, one is 120 degrees. That adds up to 180. Therefore angles T and S are also supplementary. So now let's look at a pair of angles that you're going to use quite often when you are solving problems, when you are proving things. And this is the vertical angles. So vertical angles are formed by intersecting lines. They share a common vertex, but not a common side. So if I look at these two intersecting lines, I'm looking for a pair of angles that share a common vertex, but they don't share a side. So angle two and angle four share a vertex, but they don't share a side. So it looks like they're kind of opposite of each other, right? And that actually is what a vertical angle is. Two and four are considered vertical angles. And then one and three are also vertical angles. So when you draw intersecting lines, you form two pairs of vertical angles. Two and four is one set, one and three is the other set. And remember, visually, they're right across from each other. They're not right next to each other. One and two are right next to each other, and those form a linear pair because they share a common side. But angles two and four are not right next to each other. They do not share anything but a vertex, and that's why those are vertical. So while we're talking about intersecting lines, let's talk about perpendicular lines. Now perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect, but specifically they intersect at right angles. And this is also something you should be familiar with from Algebra 1. So I have this diagram here, and there are two ways really to mark perpendicular lines in a figure. One is to use the angle measure of 90 degrees, and the other one is to make that little corner. This corner is the most commonly used marking for perpendicular lines, um, but you can also do this if you want to. Now you really only have to mark one of these because logically as a consequence, you're gonna end up getting all four of them being 90 degrees. And if you wanna write a statement that says two lines are perpendicular, um, you have to use this upside down capital T. It is the symbol for the phrase is perpendicular to. So this thing here is how I write uh, line one is perpendicular to line two, which is what is drawn here. And of course you can't talk about perpendicular lines if you don't mention parallel lines. So parallel lines are two distinct coplanar lines which do not intersect, meaning they have to be in the same plane to be considered parallel lines. Um, and so there are ways to mark parallel lines in a figure, and that is to use uh, arrows, an additional little set of arrows in the body of the line. So one set of arrows means these two lines are parallel, 
And if you have multiple sets of parallel lines, you can distinguish by using two of these little arrow symbols. So that means these pair, line three and line four, are parallel, and this pair, line five and line six, are parallel. And if I don't want to write out a sentence, and instead I want to use a symbol, the symbol for parallel looks like a little pair of parallel lines. So I would say L3, two little bars, L4. And this represents the sentence, line three is parallel to line four. All right, so now we're going to talk about how important this word coplanar is to the definition of parallel lines. Um, because there is a different set of lines in geometry that never intersect each other, but they're not parallel, and it's because they're not coplanar. And those are called skew lines. These are three, these are, uh, this is a three-dimensional thing, so I've drawn a terrible cube here, and this edge of the cube, this upper right edge of the cube, and this back flat edge of the cube, these are lines that will never intersect with each other. Um, so, but they're not parallel because they're not coplanar. Instead, they are skew lines. Big difference between parallel and skew. But if you just remembered like the definition as, oh, lines that never intersect, then which one do we mean, right? Parallel lines have the condition of having to be coplanar, whereas skew lines cannot be coplanar. Okay, now to end this video, I'm going to leave us with a couple of questions. We're actually going to address the first one, um, and the other two I'm going to leave up to you to think about. So the first question says, given measure of angle 1 is 30 degrees, and the measure of angle 2 is 150 degrees, right, that's kind of given. The statement is, angle 1 and angle 2 are a linear pair. And the, and the question is, is that true or false? Well, all I know is that they add up to 180 degrees, which means they're supplementary but I have no additional information about how their vertices are related to each other, if they share a common side, if they form a line with their non-common sides, which are the conditions I need for linear pair. Now because of that, this statement is false. And in geometry, if you want to show something's true, you have to prove it. But if you want to show something is false, all you need to do is come up with something called a counterexample, which is an example that proves this to be untrue. And so this is quite easy. I can just draw this counterexample. And uh, you don't have to, counterexamples don't have to be statements. They can be statements, but sometimes it's actually just easier to, to draw a picture that proves your point. Okay, now whenever you say something is false, you must provide the counterexample, right? That's, it's not enough to just say true, false. False requires the counterexample. And so if I say that's 30 degrees, and that's 150 degrees, this is my counterexample, right? They are two angles that fit the criteria of the statement, 30 degrees, 150, right? But they are not a linear pair. Now, when we do true, false in the beginning of the year, I am not going to make you, um, prove things are true necessarily. Um, what I am going to do is I am going to make sure that you give me a counterexample for the false. It's your reasoning, right? It's like your work. And so now the two questions I want you to consider. Uh, if you can reason through these now, that's awesome. So first, can you show or prove or explain that vertical angles are congruent? Like if I see a picture of vertical angles, it looks like two and four are congruent, and it looks like one and three are congruent, but can you explain why that's true? It's not enough to look like it. You have to be able to explain why. So try to see if you can come up with an argument that would explain why those angles are indeed congruent. Now, if you have trouble with that, here's a little side question that might help you out, but it's a different question that's also interesting. Can you list all of the linear pairs in this figure? All right, all of them, and there are quite a few. All right, so I'll leave you with those questions and uh, see you in the next video.